All right, folks, Tonto Bob here. To where the air comes in, this crew around there. I just stuck. So, Ben. What have we witnessed today? Taco Bell. All right, guys. So this is going to be probably the last update video of the Gasifier for Dummies series. Uh, I just completed my engine test run. All right, we need some more gas, I think. There we go, I lost. Um, about an hour ago, and the Gasifier is still cooling off. If you can see, there's still smoke coming out of up here. Because it got really, really hot when I was doing that test run. Ran it for a long time. So, what this video is going to be about is I'll probably cut to a um, clip of the updates I've done to it. Like, you know, the things I've done to the main unit and all that stuff right now. And then I will get to this list of problems that I have with it. So, I'll cut to that clip right now. A little update on my uh, improvements to this. This is a stainless steel pot uh, I bought for like two bucks at um, Goodwill. Drilled a whole bunch of holes in it for my new shaker grate. And also underneath there, uh, if you can see, eh, not really. Um, it's about five inches tall. My new reduction zone is about five inches tall. And this is just a comparison. This is my old reduction zone, which is about three and a half inches tall. Two inches wide it's made of the same pipe as that one is so that one's also two inches wide and there's my old shaker grate made of a super thin steel pot um not made very well and it was starting to morph after this or warp i guess after a few uh test runs so it wasn't very good hopefully the stainless steel will hold up better and uh also since it's deeper with a deeper reduction zone clean out my uh clean the tar and stuff out of my uh gases better all right, so now that you're back and you saw what I've done, um, installed and everything, I'm not going to uh, just be done with this gasifier. I'm still going to do something because I want to run a tractor off of it. I'm going to put it on a wagon, every wagon and everything. But I have a list of problems here, which I'm probably not going to fix to most of them. Um, just keep them in mind for my next gasifier, which I want to build around a motorcycle and probably be the final last gasifier I build. Um, this is more... This is kind of like my last gasifier, which was, it's still kind of just a training rig uh, for me so I can get a good feel for wood gasification before I actually build a project where I invest a lot of money into it. And that cheaping out and everything happens to be my very first problem. And I'm not going to explain that because it'll be pretty obvious once I get down to the rest of them. So the next one is going to be crummy blowers. Um, I've gone through two or three blowers in this gasifier. The one I used in the test run today where I ran an engine uh, is no longer working. I, it shorted or something. I tried to plug it in to do another test run on a, on a bark and it uh, shorted and didn't work. So that goes with two blowers uh, that I got that I destroyed doing this with this. Uh, so I guess I need to not cheap out on blowers next time. Next one is also is a pipe diameter too small throughout the whole thing. Um, while this pipe diameter is two inches, um, two inches or like two and a or two and a quarter or something like that inches everywhere. This is like two and a quarter inch pipe or something like that. I still don't feel comfortable with it and think that um, I should use a three inch pipe diameter throughout everything um, because that just ensures that that is the easiest path for uh, the gases to get sucked through, and I won't have to clean it maybe ever. Um, if I have that big of pipe on there. Next one is poorly constructed cyclone filters. Um, they need to be exact. So what I mean by that is this cyclone filter was completely, completely rushed when I made it. Then the dimensions are all wrong and I'm probably pretty sure it doesn't even work like a cyclone filter is supposed to. So my next one should be exactly to the ones in the FEMA manual. And these cyclone filters here um, would be a lot better. These here. It would be a lot better if they were actually cyclone filters uh, that had the uh, vertic or inverted cone shape on them. Um, the next one is, let's see, not enough radiator. 
So I do have a lot of radiator on here, as you can see, um, but it's all just, the gases travel down all those pipes and then out. They don't go up, down, up, down, or anything like that. Um, and that's because those pipes are just too thin and uh, will have a lot of um, drag on the gas going through them. So I think I need to build a more effective radiator with a big, thick pipe um, where it can travel through a lot more radiator and be a lot more effectively cooled down and probably make that radiator out of aluminum and not steel. Uh, that way it doesn't rust and that way it disperses heat easier. Uh, my next problem is not using heat resistant paint and silicone. I'll give you a quick look at what I mean by that. Look at that paint coming off. Paint over here burning off. This silicone right here completely black and charred. Um, the paint and silicone up here is heat resistant up to 500 degrees. And so is this silicone and so is that silicone, 500 degrees silicone. It's, peel it's uh, kind of peeling off after that test run. I ran it for over an hour and it's got really hot. So that, that just goes along with the first thing of just cheaping out. Um, next one, my reduction zone probably should be a cone, not a cylinder. Yes, my, or my, under my reduction zone. So my reduction zone, if you've seen my other videos, it's just a cylinder that comes straight down to the ash grate. I think that it'd be better if it was kind of like a cone um, because that's how normal inverts are and I think that would give more air or, or more room for um, my gases to contact with um, the biochar and clean them and it also would not clog up my, um, my shaker grate, it wouldn't clog up my unit as much as a cone kind of does. So I think it'd be a lot uh, less clogging and have a lot more less bridging issues with the fuel and stuff like that if I use a cone instead of a cylinder for my, um, I guess, the, the place that goes right above the shaker grate. I don't know how to describe that, what's that's called. So then again, the next thing is also having, has to do with bridging issues. My air intake, which is right here, and if you watch my other videos, goes straight down my hopper and straight under the top of my uh, combustion area. I think that it should be just a traditional air intake. I try to copy this design a little bit from Flash 001 USA because it's super simple and it is super simple to build, but I think a normal air intake with the two years all the way around the edge, five to seven, uh, two years around the edge, um, that maybe go through some sort of a uh, heating up box first and then down onto the, from the sides onto the um, uh, combustion area. Those would probably be better for this one reason and that reason is because of my fuel has to be really small so it doesn't bridge up in my hopper and doesn't bridge up in my um, combustion zone. So as much as I would love to keep using the simple um, air intake, I think on my next gasifier it needs to be from the edges so I don't get so many bridging issues. Um, okay, so the next one is my tar. What does that say? Tar and condensation catchers are too jury-rigged. Yeah, that's pretty uh, obvious. It's got two bottles down here that are pretty much permanently on there. I have to take them off, get the tape off and all that crap. Um, sucks taking those off and emptying them. So I just need to have something kind of like this one over here. It's super convenient just to open up the valve and dump it out. And maybe even have a little like gauge in there where I can see like um, how high the water is or whatever the tar and water it is. So, yeah, that's pretty obvious. You know, make those easier and less jury-rigged, more permanent. So then filter medium, also not good enough. Hay, I don't believe is good enough. Not fine enough um, medium to clean all the gas. Wood pellets, I guarantee you now, since that was since I had to run it after, I had to run it through here, because um, I was just too fed up with it before on my last test run, I guarantee my wood pellets down there got soaking wet from the condensation and are now a giant, just massive pile of sludge in my bucket down there that I'm going to have to clean out, which sucks because I put that foam on there and that's going to be a pain in the butt to undo. So yeah, so uh, once again, jury rigged, once again, um, just made to be quick and cheap. And uh, I just, I was, th I knew it was going to be hard to take apart, but, uh, but uh, I just didn't care when I did it. So. I guess I just gotta care more when I do stuff like that and uh, not cheap out. So yeah, gotta replace the filter medium with something more permanent and uh, something finer. Definitely finer filter medium in my, my top filter uh, to really clean the particles out. 
Let's see, next one is, and I only have two left guys, so st uh, stay with me. Everything needs to be better supported and braced. Yeah, look at this right here. I can move this whole thing. Bucket's not even uh, really supported by that. My gasifier main unit, wiggly, everything over here. This, uh, fill, this thing is held up by one board, which is crudely up. Very, very movable zip ties yeah you get the picture cheaply done not very good um if i put that if i make this on a wagon and uh to pull behind a tractor i'll brace everything up a lot better and not even use that same skid won't use those stupid boards for uh shims and stuff i'll, I'll make it good so last one. Oh, this one's not very good uh, <laughs> i like to end off on a big one but you know better transport for wheels those wheels suck i hate moving this thing I need to get this thing on a wagon with some nice big wheels that won't freaking bend like that. Axes won't bend. And uh, then it'll be good to go. So, if you stick with me, or stuck with me this whole time, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you can prevent uh, making the same mistakes and all that stuff. Pretty much, I knew what I was doing when I built this in general. I knew that a lot of things weren't right, like obviously sealing that up. I sealed that up with with caulk too it, it, i knew it was going to be hard for me to take apart but you know what it was cheap easy to do and i didn't care um yeah that joint right there is going to be hard to take off everything about this i just went quickly and cheaply on it um that that's most that's the, that's just the main problem here I, I knew what to do i knew it would be right but i cheaped out and went quickly and uh, uh i just tried to build it like as quickly as I could and get some videos out. So, that said, if you're gonna build a gasifier you wanna be proud of and wanna work well, you gotta spend a little money, you gotta pay attention to details, you gotta do what you know is right to do. Um, if something's not quite right, just don't be like, screw it. That's how it's gonna be. If you want it to work and be permanent, you gotta build it right. So, with all that said, Thanks for watching. Um, go check out my other videos, especially the one to, I did earlier today where the gas fire runs on, um, runs on wood pellets and it runs a 16 horsepower engine. So it'd be uh, really helpful if you liked this video, subscribed, and I hope you learned from it. So thank you for watching.